Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. In the last few hours, Governor Cooper signed an executive order banning TikTok and other certain apps on state computers and mobile phones. The order gives the state IT department two weeks to come up with a way to get apps such as TikTok and WeChat off state devices. The order says this is to protect the safety, security and privacy of North Carolinians because of potential cyber attacks. TikTok, among the most visited sites in the world, used by an estimated 100 million Americans every month. Massively popular, except maybe in Washington. I've been expressing concerns about TikTok for months on end. The Senate now passing a new GOP-led bill that would keep government devices from accessing TikTok, an app owned by a parent company based in China. This administration needs to force TikTok to put up a firewall, U.S. TikTok, between itself and Beijing. A separate bipartisan proposal introduced this week would ban TikTok altogether in the U.S., citing security concerns. Neither bill is likely to become law this session, but it all highlights the growing push in government. A dozen states, including two more today alone, now forbid TikTok on some or all employee devices. We do have national security concerns, uh, at least from the FBI's end. TikTok has said it does not store U.S. user data in China and does not share information with the Chinese government. It's negotiating a deal with the Justice Department to address security concerns. The legislation that you've seen um, in the states and um, in the Senate doesn't actually solve any real problem at all. We've been working with the federal government um, on a solution that we believe solves um, any perceived problem with TikTok beyond a shadow of a doubt. Some lawmakers do use the platform to get their message out, just like tens of millions of Americans who use TikTok not just for fun, but for news, info, and more. I don't think using TikTok increases the risk you face from Chinese espionage. Doesn't mean we should like TikTok, and Congress clearly doesn't, but nothing that users need to worry about right now. Hallie Jackson, NBC News, Washington. Money don't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. I like to see you wiggle, wiggle. In just five years, TikTok has amassed more than one billion global users, cutting up all the veggies that are going to go into the broth. Eyeballs around the world glued to the endless content and viral videos. How long do you think you spend on TikTok every day? Uh, two to three hours. Two to three, three hours. Three to four hours. But last month, the U.S. government, along with more than a dozen states, banned TikTok on most federal devices, citing national security concerns over its Chinese parent company and the possibility it could pressure TikTok to hand over personal data. Right in my fear. Really there is no public it. evidence the Chinese government has done that, but there is evidence of another risk, social media's impact on mental health, particularly among Gen Z. Teen depression started to rise after 2012. So did self-harm and suicide. Dr. Jean Twangy says as smartphones and social media grew, so did the rate of depression among teens, nearly doubling between 2004 and 2019. By that year, one in four U.S. teen girls had experienced clinical depression, according to Twangy. So there's pro-anorexia videos, there's videos that instruct people on, on, on how to cut themselves. Because what the algorithm is trying to do is get people to use the app for longer because that's how the company makes more money. TikTok in a statement said, quote, one of our most important commitments is supporting the safety and well-being of teens. And we recognize this work is never finished. We continue to focus on robust safety protections for our community while also empowering parents with additional controls for their teens account through TikTok family pairing. Users of TikTok spent an average of an hour and a half a day on the app last year, more than any other social platform. What is it that keeps you scrolling, even if you know maybe you've spent one, two hours on it? Once you watch the one video, you're like, well, time to watch another. So you just keep doing It's like a cycle. You don't realize that the time is passing. That's exactly what happened to Jerome Yankee. I'd definitely done all-nighters on TikTok before. I had just been scrolling until the sun came up. He says he lost sleep. His grades suffered. He lost touch with his friends. He lost his sense of self. In 2021, he deleted the app. 
Getting disappointed by my own life is never something I want to be doing, especially when I have the power to change it, but I just wasn't because I was spending hours on this app. We have like a lot of cool resources that we give to our audience for free. Including but Hannah Williams proves the positive side of TikTok, allowing her to create a business, Salary Transparent Street, providing pay transparency to her nearly 1 million followers. I think TikTok definitely helped just because they have such audience reach potential. She hopes TikTok's algorithm works in her favor. Helping people in marginalized communities is the only reason I am doing this. It's my entire mission.